Tuned in to the Navarro Miller Report, featuring the hottest in news, entertainment, sports, sports, and all those topics for the mainstream audience. The Navarro Miller Report. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Navarro Miller Report. I'm your host, Dave Navarro. Mr. Uh, Jeremy Miller could not be here today, so uh, in his place we have... Our special guest co-host, super producer, Max producer, Mr. Ronnie King. Ronnie, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Is that you playing that music in the back? Yes, I am. You know, you know how oh, you do. Come on now. That's good music. <laughs> Actually, I gotta go ahead and give uh, credit. Well, I gotta go ahead and give credit to um, to. Uh, uh, Ian Gearin, he's actually the the one that did this uh, this song this song. He does does, does a lot of songs. Oh, really? He was nice enough. He's a he's a musical artist, very talented musical artist. Oh, uh, he tight. went ahead and said, "Hey man, whatever I could do for your show, you know, I'm here. I love your show. I love your concept. Let me go ahead and help out." So he gave us the background music, and this background music actually belongs to some of his songs uh, that he's got. So, but yeah, I mean, I love playing the, the music in the background and everything, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, love it. It's, it's an old seventies jam. It, it's, it's, but, it's, it's clean, oh. right? It's chill, right? It's clean. It's a, it, oh, well, it reminds me a lot of, a lot of good times I've had in life. It's times that you remember times that you don't remember times. that you Yeah. That I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember a man. Oh yeah, God. I we remember that. We, 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 we would like to hope so. We would like to definitely hope so. But anyways, um, I yeah, man. Like Ronald Isley, I'd be into it. Yeah, just totally, just just chill, just chill with it, right? <laughs> You're already starting to like, this is, this, see, this is what a producer does. They listen to a sound. Oh, they can't, like, yeah, they can't. The, yeah, you yeah. just can't help but to try to go ahead and be like, hmm, maybe a little something. Hey, does here. Jeremy sing? No, Jeremy does not sing. Oh, At so least not that I know of. He over the top of this right now. Well, he sang, well, he sang when he was a kid. He sang because ah. uh, he was uh, he was the voice of Linus on uh, in the Peanuts gang. Mm. He was actually the voice of Linus, so he sang when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. So he does sing. I don't know if he sings now, yeah. but he did sing. He did sing back then. So it's that I, I could have got him to sing. I think you still can. I think you, I think you might be able to get him to sing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Ronnie. You're a very slick guy. It's possible. Oh. You never know. Oh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. so welcome everybody to the show. Uh, we have a wonderful show for you today. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, Jeremy couldn't be here today. Uh, but Ronnie, I mean, dude, you are an incredible producer. We'll get to the stuff that you've done. We'll get to the the things that you've done. And believe me, there are a lot. And you've been with so like you you pretty much have have uh have done work with so many artists throughout the years but we'll get through we'll get to that in a second but first we want i want to go ahead and talk a little bit about what's going on in the movie industry a new scream movie is being filmed they're bringing back all the old cast nev campbell courtney cox uh david arquette they're bringing back all the old uh the old cast from the original scream movies and Dude, this is like number what six, number five, six, something like that. Isn't I mean, that it's it's crazy, right? It's crazy. I mean, I'm just like, I'm trying to figure out exactly if they're going to come out with, uh, if they're trying to do the same thing as Fast and the Furious, and make it like, you oh, know. I could. I don't know. Whenever I watch, uh, like, uh, what do you call them? Horror movies. Horror movies. Yeah. This is more of a slasher. I, I find a lot of comic comical stuff in it. Really. Reason. Really? Yeah, they're trying to be all serious and they're killing, and I'm like, wow. I don't know. I laugh. <laughs> I don't know why. I laugh. Like, I think it's funny. You got a sick <laughs> mind, my friend. Very sick mind. Something's wrong with you, Ronnie. Hey, you know what they say? Comes the last word in fear. Nice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, then again, you have been in the music industry, so you've seen a lot of crazy, crazy stuff. Oh, that's that scream part 10. <laughs> you're like I, what are you episodes in that you're like what are you talking about i lived scream okay <laughs> there's a lot of chopping oh stabbing, my God. there's shooting. a lot well there's a lot of cutting there's a lot of cutting. 
<laughs> no crossing the line. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> we're not, there's we're, a lot of getting getting cut too. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, I mean, this, that industry is vicious, man. Oof. That industry is vicious. Hip hop in the '90s was definitely. Yeah, I, really I, I could I could only imagine. I could only yeah, imagine. it was cool though. Movie but did you but did but did you know Ronnie that Scream was actually based on a real person? What? Yeah, Scream was actually based on a real slasher that terrorized uh Florida residents back in like 95. And he was they were they called him the Gainesville Rip, uh, Ripper. That's what they called him, the Gainesville oh. Ripper. And this guy dude, talk about a sick sadistic human Gainesville. being. Gainesville. Ooh. Yeah, it would happen in Gainesville, Florida, back in uh, 95 or so. He was terrorizing a small town in Gainesville. And what was happening there is that he just basically, he, he's, he started off by mutilating uh, two ladies. He raped one of them and wow. completely, like, I believe he decapitated the other uh, and killed them both, obviously. And he would go on to the next victims. Like, it was, it was insane. For, for so long, authorities are trying to find who this guy was. They first thought it was a student at, uh, I believe, the University of Florida. They thought it was him at first, but it turned out it wasn't him. It turned out to be a 37-year-old guy from, uh, from Louisiana that had priors. Right. He, was, he, was, he was connected to murders in Louisiana. And mm. he moved over to Florida and decided to start make, doing these mass murders to all these people. Can you believe that? Jeez. All I can say is I thought that Drew Barrymore looked really, really sexy in this movie. <laughs> see, that's how I see it. I don't see her getting murdered or killed. Or I'm like, dang, she looks good, bro. No, she looked great. She looked great. I back thought she then. looked really cute. No, she looked great. She had the whole shorter. Right. I think that was like her comeback. I think that was one of her comeback movies after the Wedding Singer, or during the time of the Wedding Singer, something some, somewhere oh, around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, she had done the Wedding Singer with Adam Sandler. <laughs> no, she did. She did a great job. She did a great job. I mean, too bad that they killed her. Spoiler alert: they killed guess her. In the very I, first I, scene. I talked to today, Peter Dante. We've got a record that we we have that we're bringing out after the first of the year. You know, I meant to ask you about Peter Dante. He was in the ro- yeah. in the news recently. He was. <laughs> what happened? He got mad at the neighbor, and it was just a neighbor squabble. Well, it was a neighbor was being too loud. They live in Beverly Hills, you know. Well, for all of all of those that don't know who Peter Dante is, Peter Dante has been in a lot of the Adam Sandler movies. Yeah, uh, he was in the Water Boy. You yeah. know, he he played he played the quarterback that hated the Water Boy in the mm-hmm. in you know from there. Uh, he was also in uh, Big, Daddy. Uh, Big Daddy. He played one of the one half of the gay couple that that supported you know Adam Sandler's character. Uh, he was he was also what really trips me out is that he was the one that was the caddy, the homeless caddy. In Happy Gilmore, I didn't even know oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, yeah. Wait, no, that wasn't him. No, I'm sorry, no. that wasn't him. Oh, that was. Uh... Right, look at that. I'm just going with you. You're right. <laughs> I don't know. He's been in so many freaking movies. He comes over here to the studio, and we just rock out. And he's and he's awesome. He's Italian, so he can sing. All Italians can sing. Doesn't nice. matter. Has he and has he cut got, a record with you yet? He's got great. So, oh, we t- a bunch of them when we're taking it actually on the road to Costa Rica after the first of the year. You know, and I saw you in Costa Rica too. How was it down there? I've been going there twelve years. I've had land and a ranch out there for a, a long time. We're yeah, actually thinking of, we're we're actually uh, Jeremy and I. We actually were thinking about uh, possibly uh, opening up a sports bar down there. Man, open anything down. It's the Wild West. Dude. Well, you know, you, you know what, you, you know, Jeremy's a chef, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a professional he's chef. A oh, dude. I mean, yeah. everything's fresh down there, man. I mean, we get the guys. They spear fish. They get the fish oh, right away. Boom! It's it's to the ranch by noon. He could be he be, could be cooking it for the. Oh, dude, he 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 does so many. Mm-hmm. Like his specialty is southern style, and oh, wow. he he does, dude. He does jambalaya. His jambalaya is ridiculous. Ooh. Like his jambalaya is like, Ooh. oh my god, it's it's incredible. Like I've eaten his food, and it's just so amazing. Mm-hmm. His his food. So it's definitely like hopefully uh, we're definitely gonna have you back on the show again next time. Yeah, you'll be, be, on. My, be my guest in Costa Rica, please. We've been going there a long time, and we have a beautiful ranch with horses and zip lining and barbecues. Oh, and, yeah, I've no. never been, and the, and the thing is, the thing is, I have family that are in Central America. They're just in, they're in El Salvador, so they're oh, just okay. right up. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I've it's all been. it's all beautiful country, and the people are beautiful, man. I've heard and mixed you know. reviews. I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard oh, yeah? so, like from people from Costa Rica are telling me don't go down there because it's a very violent country. They just don't. They just don't. Oh, the they media don't, doesn't they really don't put it out there. there. Yeah, they don't go down there too much. But we can go down there. We, you know, 
just keep your nose clean and stay out of the brothels. The brothels. Mm. <laughs> they still have brothels down there, right on. Brothels. <laughs> just stay out of like weird places and go with your crew, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's that's everywhere you go, really. You just don't go yeah. ahead and veer off. You just stay with the group and make Even sure like that you like in L.A., what? You're not going to be just wiling out and going somewhere crazy. Exactly. No, that's definitely, well, well, well. Maybe you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm all trying no, to remember. Funny. Like, well. I was just in downtown L.A., and then I got invited to a function, an event with uh, this actor guy, Patrick Kilpatrick. Mm -hmm. He has two names, Patrick Kilpatrick. I know who that is. Oh, you do? Okay. Anyway, she was there, and so they had me come down to this thing or whatever. But if you take one wrong turn, dude, you're on Skid Row. Like, yeah. just like that. Boom. It's that It's that quick. Well, it almost reminds me yeah. of that scene from uh, from Batman with uh, with little with Bruce Wayne when his parents got killed. You know, they were in the opera. They were everything. Oh, and yeah. then from, like, one second to the next, they're in Skid Row suddenly, and they get, like, killed. And it you just know? happened. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It, it is the, mon the monkeys aren't going to kill. That's the thing. They don't have any. The they don't have any like, it's it's not it's not like uh, it's not like uh, it's not like outbreak, is it? Oh no no no! They're they're so sweet. I live in. I have a tree house. I have a tree house while we're building some other property that we're doing. So me and my wife, we put a tree house up, and it's rad because I'm like right up with the monkeys every morning. Really, man, yeah. you you just like seriously live in paradise, don't you? Well, I'm here in the desert, you know, not too far from where Coachella is. One more year, we're going to bring it in this year. Really? Because I, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, won I'm wondering back. if that's going to happen again. Oh, it's coming. That? Oh, yeah. No, no. We got. Don't even start with the uh, touring business because I've been in a bubble for like seven weeks deep in Live Nation AEG freaking bubble. And how is and how is that so far? It's freaking brutal. <laughs> it's you don't get to you can't go out. I mean you can't go anywhere. Well, again, we'll we'll definitely we'll talk about that. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll definitely talk about that. We'll okay, definitely so talk about Scream, that. great movie. I see it's already made 150 million. It's getting there. It's definitely getting there. It's definitely definitely getting there. And so I mean, but that was the first one. They've made other ones after that, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's one of those things where. I'm telling you, man, it's um, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting. So we'll see what happens with that. We're talking to In Entertainment News about Demi Lovato and how she doesn't want uh, aliens to be called aliens because I guess they're po it's politically incorrect. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly like it, they she wants them to be called ETs, extraterrestrials. And I believe that she's doing this because for the plain and simple fact that she's got a new peacock series coming out soon because she's out there hunting for aliens i don't know if maybe oh. I, I don't know if maybe this has something to do with maybe like uh because as we know uh uh they because she was she oh, i'm sorry they okay. like to be called they non-binary neither he nor she they're now called her them uh they had an overdose not too long ago and ever since that happened demi oh. has been kind of She's been reevaluating her life, reevaluating everything around her, and I believe that Demi wants to go ahead and may, like try to maybe I don't know see what see what's out there, so to speak. You know, maybe. so so I mean, she started a new thing, but again, I keep on calling her them she. So my apologies for that. Oh, you can't call her a she. No, no, they want to oh. be called they. Neither she oh, nor they. He. They, they, they want you know, to call they. She's a little late to the game. I've been going to Joshua because I hear she found all this out in Joshua Tree as of uh -huh. recent, right? That's where mm -hmm. she saw the. That's what. That's what they're. Tree. That's what they're. They're trying to go ahead and film this thing. I believe. Dude, that's like forty-five minutes from my ranch up the mountain. We've been going up there since we were kids. We associate with all the aliens up there. They don't Hi. want to be called them or they. Or... <laughs> You just say, hey, bro, what's up? Let's smoke a joint. <laughs> hey, oh, that's so always that. I don't care what you call me, but just call me. Just call me, right? <laughs> just call me. I don't care what you call me. Just call me. <laughs> that's all you got to do. <laughs> well, I'm glad she's a spokesman for they because um, they've needed one for a long time. Well, no, I mean, they is what she like, what, what well, they, they like oh, to be called. Uh, right. Demi likes to be called they. 
They, right. as in the extraterrestrials, they want them to be called <laughs> extraterrestrials. You this can't is even really, do it. This is hard. I can't <laughs> even. Like I'm like I'm like Demi wants aliens to be called extraterrestrials. I'm gonna call her Demi from now on. Just Demi. Demi. Yeah, there. It's like come it's on. done. Lovato yeah. wants them. I'm gonna go Lovato next. Watch. I'm just gonna go by their last name, Lovato. How about that? God. Anyways, so Lovato decided. To, uh, the Lovato said on TMZ, or this is from TMZ. TMZ says while talking shop on their ET project, they said this. I really think that if there was anything out there that would want to do that, that would want to do that to us, it would have happened by now. But I think that we have to stop calling them aliens because aliens is a derogatory term hmm. for anything. Uh, that's why I like to call them ETs. So yeah, okay. that's a little tidbit, a little information that Wonder I where learned. she got that from. Probably during her overdose. I have no idea. <laughs> like th that Steven is the crazy. Spielberg, maybe. You know, <laughs> that is just I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Man, I mean, Dude, no. But in all, in all, in all, you can't even explain it and say it. It's like. Hard. I just I can't I don't understand I really don't understand it's just so such well a, maybe like, we can get her on the show the next time and she can explain it for us hey you're the one with the connections my friend I can do it She's make it happen biz. make it happen make it happen I mean you do have you do have the connections like crazy so we can, we're one phone call away just one yeah just one but uh, I want to <laughs> I actually wanted to actually ask you since you live close to Joshua Street, have you actually ever seen any like weird stuff in the sky the or anything like, really from my whole see, life you can see everything out there too with the stars everything. everything oh man when it's when it's super pitch black i'm the, here i'm on the lower level i'm by coachella so if you've ever been to coachella you know we're on the the lower level but up there it's even prettier but you know it, it's it's different um it's a different atmosphere is different up there mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. It's a different atmosphere. So you can see things. You can kind of like communicate. Do you do you really do communicate differently? I do believe that up in Joshua Tree. There's no doubt about it. You know, you're not it's, I think it's maybe thousand feet. Maybe, I don't know. So you're losing a little bit of your oxygen. Is it does it Let's does the does the, in consideration. does the levels like the, does the level drop up there or something? I mean, is the altitude that well, high that just, you start losing it's still oxygen? Still the desert, but you're still, you know, at a high altitude. Yeah, you're at a higher altitude than sea level like we are in LA, right? Yeah. So, higher, you got to higher being the operative word. Take a little bit of that. Yeah, and then but you can <laughs> see really great stuff out there and it's like not only do you see stuff great out there, but you can see great stuff on the land as well. That's and awesome. I think that's what uh, the ETs like to see is they like the human part of it, but they want to go hang out with like the coyotes and trip out on them. The non-humans. Really? <laughs> the non-humans, because us humans, we just don't get it. We just don't get it. Well, they can feel our vibe. Well, they could sense it yeah. or they can. Well, I mean, they say extra sensory perception to ESP as well. So, I mean, supposedly they could yeah. go ahead. Um, they could go ahead and. And. Then just pick right in our minds yeah exactly but the, but the dogs are just like hey man i got two things i want to eat and poop <laughs> and, and the f word we can do that sounds like I mean, there's only life. like three things that's it sounds like my life sounds like a great life to have <laughs> that sounds like a great yeah. life yeah. Eat, eat poop and eat poop and everything else so. <laughs> yeah I think that's about it but that's what coyotes do and so they can sense that 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 safeness and that you know calmness that that zen that zen type of thing. Yeah, she's up there not getting laid. That's why. Well, I don't I don't know about that. I, I you wouldn't. think she is? They? <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> oh, what is she a part of the pineapple club now? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> um, but no, uh, the the other thing too uh, that Demi's trying to go ahead, and I think she's trying to find herself. I think she's okay. just trying to find herself. Oh, right no, now. I think that's great. That's that's the thing. After after everything that happened, I mean, she she broke. She I think she was engaged for a little bit. Then that broke off, mm -hmm. and now she's just trying to find herself. Which good for her. Good for her trying to go I ahead think and it's great. I think celebrities sometimes, and I, and I've been there myself. Mm -hmm. um, I think they just need to take some time off, man. Go 
to an island, chill out, and just exist. Just because at the end of the morning. day, we are just human. Oh, we are. We yes, are just we human. Are. <laughs> we are just human. Some of us. Me, you I don't know. know. And so, get away the, from the, the thing, you know. The, jur- the jury's still out on me, so yeah. we'll, we'll figure that one out. Uh, in, other, in other sports news, actually, this is this is just in right now. Breaking news. Uh, coach of the Las Vegas Raiders coach, John Gruden, it has is out uh, of the of the of the Las Vegas Raiders. He is no longer the head coach. Now, this right here, this happened because over the weekend there was reports that that John Gruden said some very racist, uh, may, had some racist remarks in an email actually, and this these remarks had to do with. Um, uh, he made racist remarks about NFLP executive director Demaurice Smith. I'm sorry, Demaurice Smith in a July 2011 email. Now, because of this, it seems that the Raiders have reevaluated uh, what happened, and he is now out. He is no longer mm. the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, that is, I mean. That really must hurt the Raiders a lot, simply for the fact of the matter that they were starting, they've been doing so well this season. And no doubt it has a lot to do with Coach Gruden and everything else that that he had put put forth towards the team. But unfortunately, you know, these are things that just happen. I mean, you can't you can't be a part of a football team where it's so diverse that oh, you go yeah. ahead that you go ahead and you say these things you say these racist remarks i mean you can't yeah. do that i mean regardless if it happened in 2011 it came back now yeah it's coming back well it's out it's out now and when and you know and when it's hey when it's out and it's hurtful then you got to deal with it right exactly and that's hurtful and i'm not saying like football player oh that really hurts my feelings but i mean hey man i was in hip-hop for years and you know I was like the only white dude in the studio for years. And how was and that for to, you? And you have to take it, man. You just have to take what it is. And at the end of the day, you just you just play your butt off and you be better than the terminology, you know? But now the question is, I swear, I swear to you, the Raiders are a cursed team. They are so cursed. Because first, oh, it was and management. I mean, <laughs> I mean, but the Raiders, but I'm serious though. The Raiders are definitely cursed because first it was horrible management, like not management, but I mean, uh, the team owner, he was just uh, yeah. so many people. I've gotten so, uh, I got so many complaints off of so many Raider fans wanting the head owner to not be the head owner because he, or the, I'm not the head owner, the owner of the team, not be the owner of the team because of the decisions he made during draft time. I mean, the Raiders have been struggling for years trying to get themselves yeah. out there. And now that they finally, they're in a brand new stadium, again, for the fifth millionth time in the row. They're in a brand new city, again. They have everything brand new. Great coach, everything, great team. They look like they're on a roll, and then, bam. Yeah. They get hit with this. It's almost like they're cursed. They, they, if it's not one thing, it's another with this team. Are you a Raider fan? Are you a Raider fan, Ronnie? I am. I I'm a fan of the fans at Raider games. Well, you know, Bethel's gonna be Bethel's gonna be kind of upset about this whole thing. He's out of his mind. He's a major Raider fan. Like he is. (laughs) No, my boy uh, and my boy from uh, West Coast Killer Bees too. Legend. He's uh, he's a Raider fan too, and he's just like he just he'll he'll sit there on the internet. I swear, play by play, going. Nope, they're gonna lose. Nope, they're gonna miss it. No, and he goes all the way through, and I'm like, bro, they just they're up by seven. He's like, yeah, but they're gonna blow it. And then we we go back and forth, and he's like, man, my boy's just, and he's a fan, but he'll sit there and just do like you know do 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 like you do and try to figure out what the problems are, and oh, then man. if they could just change some of these problems. But I love the fans in the Raider, Raiders. Uh, no, no, they're hardcore fans. They're definitely hardcore <laughs> fans. Most definitely. Like, it's 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 crazy how hardcore they are. I'm a Packer fan, so I'm oh, not a wow. Raider fan. I'm a Green Bay Packer fan, so that's a, oh, wow. that's a different story. But uh, just for all of you that have hey, joined Hey, but this- did you hear how that offended the gay community? Which part? The Packers? Packers. Really? 
I didn't hear about that. Are you serious? I just heard about that like two days ago. They oh were like, dude, God. they might change the freaking name because they're the Packers. You know, that irritates me. This cancel culture is getting on my nerves. Like, dude, for real, dude, it's I, I forget who was saying. I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me. Oh, my God. You know. it's, because people, it's because people made it that way. They made it derogatory <laughs> yeah. it's stupid like it's come on you know they made I'm not it not even lying and, they, and they, I mean, you know what they do it because they do it because i mean it's like the traitors we call them the traitors what suddenly people are gonna take offense for calling the raiders the traitors now i mean oh that's that's offensive to traitors yeah come on give me a break yeah, I, know. I don't know i don't know how i don't know how i don't know how we well i don't know how we got into it and i surely don't know how we're gonna get out of it Jeez, it's just it's crazy. But for all those that have just joined us right now, uh, I wanted to let you know we had some technical difficulties earlier. We're picking up where we left off. Uh, Jeremy Miller is not on today. He had he had to take care of something. So uh, unfortunately, he's not here. But fortunately for us, we have Ronnie King, super mega producer, has produced music with some of the biggest names in the industry. Uh, this gentleman, as you can see behind him, he is. He kind of knows what he's doing, just a little bit. I, I think he knows what he's doing. He, the records behind him kind of show that he knows a little bit about music. You know what's so <laughs> funny is is while I was just out on tour, we were literally sit there after the shows, and we were like, can you believe we haven't toured in like a year and a half? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, and then we're in the bubble, so we don't get to go hang out with the fans. We don't get to go to the bars. We don't get to go fucking, you know. Oh, excuse me. We don't we don't get to do the normal things that. Oh, you could you could go ahead and say doing. what you want, man. We're not FCC regulated, so you could go yeah. say what you want. <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, that was that was the weirdest part about it. But the tours went great. I mean, I know Rolling Stone's going to ride us up to actually be getting through it. I was with the band called Iration, and we opened up for uh, three eleven, and the last two dates are uh, last three dates are coming up. So there'll be a Orange County and a San Diego show. Orange County, man, that's gonna be awesome, dude. That, that's that's yeah, five points. Awesome. Great, great venue. I just played there with Pepper not long ago, a couple months ago. And there's nothing like playing the big stadiums, you know. Oh uh, man, I, I bet you've been through and you've been through a lot of the stadiums, haven't you? No, oh, yeah, these. Well, yeah, these was like eight to ten thousand. I mean, when I was with the Offspring, we were playing. Oh Jeez, my God! See, see, and that's and, and, and that's what I'm saying is that you're over here. You're like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, it's just the offspring. It's just three eleven. Yeah, just- oh no, we grew. <laughs> we kind of grew. The music is really the thing, like actors and oh, the we- only thing that doesn't have an opinion to it. It's just you either like it or you don't like it. And then we create it, and we like it when we create it. And that's like, it's such a safe haven, man. I think we need more music in the world. And right now, especially, we needed it. Like, we need it especially right now with everything that's been going on. Man. So, I crazy. mean, but but again, I, I want to go ahead and, and touch base on that okay, right now. Okay, let's keep moving just, with uh, John. Well, I mean, John Gruden's out. Another, another In other sports news, actually, Chuck Liddell addresses the domestic violence allegations. Former UFC champion and Hall of Famer. Uh, was arrested for domestic violence today, uh, I can't and he, he was. I can't either. He's he's actually one Where'd of my favorites. Hit? But but here's the thing: he addressed he addressed the he addressed what happened today in uh, on social media, and he says, "quote Last night, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department deputies who responded were professional. While the information about this case will be revealed in due course, I believe it is important to convey and clarify a few facts about the situation." I was the victim of the incident last night at our family home. As details of the case will reveal, uh, I'm sorry, as details of the case will reveal, the deputies informed me that my wife would be arrested as I did not respond, as I did not respond to her assault while I sustained bruising and lacerations. I volunteered to go in her place. This was... This is one of the many times I have tried to shield a family mental health issue from the public preview or purview. Uh, it, mm. it has been painfully apparent that this cannot continue as our private life has now reached a public breaking point. Please yeah. respect our privacy as I help to navigate our family through this difficult time. So it looks is his like his wife, the Heidi. I see here. Heidi. Yes. Yes. That's his that's wife. That's his current wife. wife. Yes. That's his current wife. Uh, he's been married to her for a long time, actually, and unfortunately, th- this is something that uh, this is something that that has happened. I've heard of many situations where the husband goes in the place of the wife, 
where he says, you know what? I'm the victim here, but I'll go in her place. I don't want her to have a record. I don't want yeah. this to happen. I'll go ahead and do for it myself. And exactly. For the kids. I'll do it. And apparently, according to what his statement says, it seems that his wife is going through some major mental issues, which has happened. This is something that's been going on a lot this year during COVID, especially during the lockdown. Many many couples many marriages have ended uh there's been a higher rate of domestic violence uh you know throughout throughout the world actually uh sexual abuse domestic violence they, they've gone up because of everybody being on lockdown so right now it seems that st stuff is starting to get a little bit moving with the vaccinations and everything things are starting to get moving a little bit but unfortunately mental health issues are still there and i believe they might have grown because of the lockdown. So I believe that that might have actually uh, triggered a lot of these mental health issues. And it seems that Chuck Liddell is dealing with such mental health issues with his yeah. wife right now. So it's a, it's a very unfortunate situation that uh, that yeah, has happened. With kids. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's bad. I mean, I, I believe their kids are grown. When I first oh, heard grown? them, I believe so. Yeah, I, be, I believe that they're uh, they're in their teens, I believe. Uh, their oh. kids are probably in their teens right about now. But, oh, I mean, you know. I, when I first heard about what happened with Chuck Liddell, I thought it was him. I thought maybe it's because, and I, and it shocked me too because, obviously, you know, Liddell is the Ice Man, but he's a, he seems like a very genuine, very nice, calm, chill guy. Yeah. Uh, that he wouldn't really harm anybody because he is considered a lethal weapon, legally speaking, because of his because of his knowledge of mixed martial arts, he is definitely right. considered a lethal weapon. Okay. So I at first I thought okay. This is was this Chuck Liddell? Did he kind of go off on his wife? Did this, this, that, and the other happen? That wasn't the case. What ended up happening was that it was actually his wife. So it's very unfortunate, but it seems that he's going to go ahead and step up and deal with the situation come what may. Mm. Hopefully, you know they're going to be okay very soon. Here, we we don't know. We'll just uh, we'll we'll keep an eye out on, on that. But uh, in other in other news, Ronnie King, we go, we go to you now. You've just been on tour with Three Eleven. With a bunch yeah. of bands. Now, for those of you that don't know, again, who Ronnie King is, this gentleman right here, and I put that in a in a post earlier, he has done music with No Effects. He's done music with Tupac. He's done music with The Offspring, Pepper, 311. I mean, God, who haven't you done music with? Me. <laughs> with you. Yeah. Yeah, with me. With yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. And he's actually... Uh, and, yeah. I mean, you know... Oh, well, you froze up a little bit. Again, these winds are killing me right now. I was stepping on you. Nice. No, no, no it's it's the winds. It's actually like uh, causing some some uh, some lagging issues, but it's not a big deal. No, what I was gonna say is, um, you've also done. You're also doing music, or you've done music actually with uh, with my with uh, my my friend's band, uh, Beto Robert Escalera, his band Lifeline. Uh, that, that's how I met you. Actually, that's they introduced me mm -hmm. to you. Actually, yeah. uh, and I was very fortunate to have you on the other podcast that I did before. I had you. I, I actually had Lifeline and you at the same time. Then I had you by yourself. You had a lot of stories. Uh, you know, you had a lot of stories. We actually have uh, some somebody here. Uh, Joe Joe from Facebook is saying three eleven the band that Scott Stapp got into a bar fight with. <laughs> Uh, 311, uh, Nick Hexum. They're like reggae rock. And I don't know if they got into a fight. I, that I don't know. Well, I mean, that's why. That's why. See, this is what I love about the show is that the, you got interactive. You got people that are asking questions yeah. right here, you know. So that's, that's, also, that's also pretty awesome right now. I'll have to ask him the next time. But Scott Stapps. I mean, Scott Stapps is cool. Nice. Well, there he you go. Good, but yeah, no, no. We didn't have any fighting. On this Thank tour. God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're, I mean, people had to go ahead. You, like you said, you were in a bubble. This is this you is were. something that's really cool. I mean, we spoke while you were on tour. You actually showed me a little bit of uh, a little bit of the bus. Showed yeah. me what was going on. And everything that was really awesome to see. And at the same time, I'm like, how are you on tour during this pandemic? But you guys were able to do it. Yeah, it was a super, super duper duper bubble-ish type thing. I actually coined the phrase with the boys, friends helping friends in a bubble. Nice. I wonder if they're going to make a song out of that. Hey, and let me tell you what, man. I mean, you get off the bus, you walk right to your place on the stage, take your mask off, everybody's cool, no one's in your space, 
you just, you know, so I couldn't wait to get to the stage, right? I'm like, let's practice for as long as we can because it was the best. And then when you jump off your platform, put the mask back on, you go get your food or whatever. I always used to take my food back to the bus, but they let you eat in the commissary. Everybody did social distancing, but, you know, there's been so many tours. And as we were out, so many tours were getting canceled because one guy decides he wants to fly back home or he wants to go see his kid or something. There's always that one person, that one person. That one dude. And even though they come back and check you and you know, it's still kind of a weird science. So I was just like, look, I am not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be the dude that frick and cancels the whole tour. I mean, kiss was getting canceled. I mean, uh, there's so like, I can't even name how many bands were canceling themselves, you know, but I have to say, we had 10,000 people at Red Rocks last week. I saw and, that. Uh, it was a fantastic. I saw that on your on your, on your your Instagram, man. That yeah. looked insane. It looked like you guys were like in a cave almost. It was yeah, it's really a cave. Awesome. Yeah, Red Rocks is one of the coolest places to play. And we are in, uh, yeah, you're in a blown out freaking mountain, man. It's a classic place. And the sound is fantastic. But you know what? They weren't in the masks. Uh, as it as it was, as I'm looking kind of at the picture right now, and the crowd wasn't in the mask, but they all have to be vaxxed, man. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And I'm not going to really go into the vax thing or not, but <laughs> let me just say what. But it didn't even matter because I was I got vaxxed back, and I don't know when we could start getting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had the J and J for me or whatever because I was going to Ibiza, man. I wanted to be the first American to go to the island, you know. Ibiza. So I was waiting by the sidelines. I had my wife right there, like we're going to Ibiza. My buddy just got this new boat out there, and I'm like, I'm I'm going. And uh, then I had some business to do out there, and I said, oh, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. I just stay positive, and it was like boom. I had a small window, and we got out there, hung out there for like three and a half weeks. So by the time I got back. I was always already way ahead of the vax. That's and awesome. And you know what? I didn't die or anything. I mean, yeah, you oh, your your skin didn't become magnetic, except for this weird <laughs> twitch I've got, and the tail. Don't forget the tail. Yeah, and I forget all the songs on stage. <laughs> but besides that, I'm pretty good. No, um, but that was it. You know, because you know it's like, uh, yeah. But anyway, anywho, it's a great great tour and. When it's all done, I guarantee you, you will see it in the Rolling Stone magazine because they're going to go, how did you do it? That's, That's awesome, saying. though. That's awesome that they were yep. able to do all that. Um, Joe also said uh, Saw 311 open for Sublime uh, with Rome in 2012 was a great show. So, I mean. It oh, was good. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but but Ronnie, you've been you you've done like tours like crazy. How different was this tour versus the other ones that you've done? Oh, dude, I'm telling you, that was the weirdest thing. Uh, that was the whole weird thing is not being able to associate with your fans. Really? Wow. I mean, I so, had. So, oh, they, were, so I, they basically cut you off. As soon as you were done, go. Yeah, you go right back to your bus. And then after everybody's kind of like gone, you could sneak out and get some air or you know what i mean you had to be yeah. kind of covert about it in a way because you know if any of the big dudes saw you kind of because even around the buses and everything because you never know uh the thing that killed the 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 uh corn tour someone brought him a package i don't know had t-shirts in it or some whatever and the one dude took it from the one dude and chick 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 and blew him out oh man i know it's brutal but uh but like I say, I think we definitely cre uh, created a, a, a bubble factor that is going to be pretty cool. You know, people are going to be able to really operate like that. And I think it, it'll 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 lighten up a bit, I think. But it just depends on how deep it all gets again. I mean, well, they're nobody... saying they're saying they're saying right now they're developing some sort of a, a medicine for people yeah. that are infected with covid. Uh, yeah. That can actually save their life. They're saying that by by oh, the good. by by the end of December, there should be a medicine that you could actually take that actually combats the virus. So oh, wow. that's that's a little bit of a hope because those same those same people are saying uh, those same doctors are saying that if that is the case, if that is in fact the case, then yeah. by by next year, by early spring next year, we should all be back to normal 
completely. I love that, man. And like I say, our biggest gift was the fact that we could go out and play for the fans again. Yeah. Oh, they so must have loved that. They must oh, have loved that, we all loved it, and they loved it, and and we just, man, we didn't want to get off the stage, really. It was man. fantastic. Yeah, but well, I'm going to go out and play with Pepper um, here shortly, too. How Pepper are those guys, man? I, 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 They're cool. I, they're man, cool. They're I'd cool. love to have them. I'd love to have them on this on on this new show. Yeah, this new Kalea show. would love to do it. We have a band called the Naughty Dawn that we dropped during the pandemic, and uh, it's really is sabotage. Cool. Is sabotage going to be playing, or is it just going to be Pepper? Sabotage. No, no, no. It'll just be Pepper for these shows. It's a reggae show, and then there's some um, acoustic shows that Kaleo does as well. So, yeah, because for those of you that don't know, Kaleo Wasman, he uh, he uh, he's the lead singer of Pepper. And he's also uh, he also uh, is the lead singer and the creator of Sabotage Sound System. That's so right. and and another band too. I forgot. I, I don't remember the third one that he's got. I know he's the third yeah, one. Yeah, we just started the Naughty Don during the pandemic, and we the sold Naughty Don's. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, we sold out. I mean, we can't keep the records on the shelves right now. Really, that's awesome. No, the music is amazing. Like yeah, I love, the I, cool. I, I love the music. I, I've always yeah. loved their their music i mean ever since they came out back in uh back in like oh, what early yeah, to mid 2000s like that. <laughs> dude, oh my god yeah. and that's the thing dude everybody and i'm remember. like i'm like kaleo man you guys are like 45 years old now <laughs> and you're still singing why don't you come get some dirty hot sex with me i'm like <laughs> i think we're gonna have to like make a new song <laughs> screw that <laughs> it's like Gee. keep the song keep the yeah. song <laughs> oh i also got a call it was fun i talked to the boys and pennywise i'm gonna be uh i did a piano solo for them on one of their records called full circle and it was a uh it was a punk rock piano i took one of their punk rock songs and made it a classical piano song right Mm -hmm. and it turned out to be transcribed by people all over the world you can go to youtube on it and just put pennywise piano solo just put that in there and you'll see me doing it live with them a few times but then you'll have people all over the world have transcribed a 15 minute piano solo of a punk rock song called unknown road so they're back out playing so i'm going to do um two shows with them san diego and vegas damn man, and i just... do the opening and yeah, you're busy. Fun. Like, that's the crazy part is that you're busy mm -hmm. during a pandemic. Like, that's 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 pretty innovative. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. And even during the lockdown, everybody was sending me tracks, man. You were so still busy. You were getting... so you could, uh, music just kept going. Man, I was doing some stuff with Eric Bobo from Cypress Hill. I had some cats from France. Doc Gynaco and it's just we weren't just making music. we are actually going to make more music but i'm so uh thrilled and blessed and grateful that i have a home studio here at my ranch in uh coachella dude and here's so, here's the thing here's yeah. the thing so my my question is are you only are you only just focusing on just you know like alternative type of music reggae type of music i mean you focus on that or are you just everywhere I've never focused, bro. No. <laughs> My attorney called told me in freaking nineteen ninety two when I signed with Jerry Heller, the infamous Jerry Heller manager ah, of NWA Jerry, and whatnot. Jerry Ruthless Heller. Records. Uh, and Jerry's like, Okay, we're gonna we're gonna sign this contract with some guy who wanted me to do some work for him or whatever. And he goes, Ron, you gotta realize this, you're a shotgun blast. That's I'm a shotgun bit. That's you're what a I mean. Shotgun I, blast. I'm a shotgun you go, you, go all, you go all over the place. I've just blown a hole in the mute. That's that's why I'm not in any one genre, right? So you have the seven millimeter. That's like Kaleo from Pepper, right? He has mm -hmm. one style of music that he does, and that's his that's his lane. Boom, seven millimeter, long range. That's what they do. You think about that. But a guy like me, man, I mean, I went from Mariah Carey to Tupac Shakur to the offspring, no effects. Snoop Dogg, I mean, right? Craig, oh, many songs with Snoop, but just Craig Mack. I mean, even going to the East Coast, you know, and recording out there during, I mean, they during didn't the even time like that they, us. during the time that there was that East Coast West Coast they didn't rivalry. They like us out there, man. <laughs> Me and Johnny J go out there and and record at Stankonia, man, and like we had love. It's because I don't know our our jobs in the music business. I can say, or our vocation, or what we do great is make music. We're not politicians we're not gang bangers we're not we're, we're not interested in your 
opinion of it anyway anyway we get paid whether you are care about what we do anyway because all you care about is tupac right yeah. or all you care about is snoop well as long as you care about snoop i'm making a bunch of money on records right That's it's just it's a about? business and i hate i hate to sound so harsh but but this, it's the truth it, this is the music business and it's like everybody wants to have their their uh, whatever careers and it's like man we got to really sit and we got to develop things you know what i mean that's why and, I'm you've, always... and you've even dabbled in spanish and latin music a too. lot of spanish i'm, seen I'm, that too. I'm producing maricela right now dude she's yeah. like the she's the uh latin uh, they call her the latin madonna wow you know i've worked with uh argentinans with uh, Los Fabuloso Cadillacs and Luciano Jr. I mean, the first song I did for Luciano Jr., he's a huge star in South America, right? Mm -hmm. uh, was with Kid Frost and Luciano Jr. and Rick James. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't that just weird? It's just a weird. That I know is it's such weird. an offlandish like, combination right there. It's like go all over and, the yeah, place. Yeah, you can go and check it out. Luciano Jr., Los Fabuloso Cadillacs, Argentina. If you don't know anything about Argentina, Los Fabuloso Cadillacs were the biggest rock band in that whole, f you know, from Argentina. Los Fabulosos Cadillacs. <laughs> yeah, all the way to freaking Mexico. I mean, these cats, they sell out. And it's so funny because I'm in this cali reggae scene right and i think 10 you know eight to ten thousand people is pretty good i like i think that's a great number and and the guys are like yeah well we don't do that all the time but you know in some markets they can you know but you go down there los fabuloso cadillacs will draw a hundred thousand people man you know wow. what i mean it's Wait a minute. it's so so when you when, when you like done music with uh spanish did you ever do anything with mana no, never with my nah, no, no, oh, but man. Uh, they just I, they actually just received, uh, I believe, uh, at the Latin Grammys, they received a lifetime achievement award. I believe that it was. was I was there, I was there, man. Uh, they, and I've got some no great pictures, I'll have to send them to you. Oh, please, man. That was one of my favorite bands when I was a kid. Oh, when I was a kid, Mana um, was like, it was just, it was just incredible. Their music yeah, they was got just, the Lifetime Achievement more Award, huh? And Te I Lloreto, think even, Te Lloreto yeah. Don Rio was one of my favorite songs when I was when I was a mm. kid. And I think Dan Danielle Habif gave him the, uh, you I know, think that, so. it, he's the inspirational speaker. Mm -hmm. It was funny. I was seeing him everywhere. I was like, dude, we got to quit meeting like this. But um, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you know, uh, the music business is great. I'm just happy to be where I'm at. Hey, you may not know me, but you know, you know what I mean? Oh, no, like say I that, say, say, as long as you say, love Austin, say... you love Mariah Carey, and you love John B., Say that, say that one more time because, again, because of the wind and everything, it's like causing a little bit, cutting off. Oh, what, what, no, what I was, was just saying as long as you love, I was just saying as long as you love Tupac and Mariah Carey and, and Snoop Dogg and, 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 and Casey and JoJo, you love me. Too. There you go. There you right go. There. And that's, I'm in the car. There you go. <laughs> because, you again, you did all the music with them. I mean, when people listen to the music in the background or the sound or anything like that, that's you. Yeah, yeah. That's you. And That's it, you doing uh, that music. And it's not, uh, it, at the time, press wasn't really that important to any of us. Even Johnny J, I mean, the great producer that he was, and 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 all of us engineer, all the engineers and stuff, we're, we're, we're just not, it's not important. We don't, we don't make or lose money by not being in the press. I'll just tell you that. But now with the advent of not only these records being, literally classics i mean if you've ever worked with tupac shakur you're oh shakur you're you're pretty much you were in a classic kind of world if you mm -hmm. did the early stuff with death row and the early stuff with epitaph records i mean those were pivotal pivotal times in the music business for my generation there's going to be pivotal times we're, we're we're still trying to figure out what to call aliens do <laughs> things are pivoting <laughs> We're pivoting. We're moving we can't things call them aliens. Remember, we have to call them extraterrestrials. Come on. You know, we just can't called call Snoop, them that anymore. Snoop. Yeah. We're like, <laughs> Snoop, Snoop. Okay. We just stole, sold 3 million records. Okay, cool. You don't got to know my name. It's, it's, it's all right. But thank you for the forum because this will actually share that information.
Of course. Hey, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm here to do. So but what, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious about something else too. Like in the industry, you you've been in it for many years. Did you ever have an issue with an artist? Because obviously there's a lot of artists that have volatility to them. Did you ever oh, yeah, have yeah. that type of volatility, you know, kind of... Oh, with the artist, yeah. yeah. Um, or were you always I mean, just chill? some most of that volatility really makes the song, really, in a way. Um, since I was... And not to be boastful or anything like uh, Dave Chappelle would say... I love his new stuff that he's doing, dude. And he's in he's a like, lot of hot water as well with the cancel culture. We talked about that in the last episode. Oh, know. yeah, did he? Yeah, but I love, I mean, he's like, look, man, when I was 14, I was I was selling jokes. Yeah. I was just good at what I did. And I'm not, I'm not saying it to be anything or anything, right? So, I mean, just when I was working with, with a lot of the people, they would generally look at me and go, who called the white dude yeah <laughs> in the hip-hop world but and i say that a lot gentler you know and then in the punk rock world they were like hey play some of that r b stuff that you do right so it was two sides of the same coin which i the memoirs are going to be called punks and thugs because i was different sides of the same coin mm -hmm. at, at that time um and was there tension there was always tension i mean with within the hip-hop community because freaking it was tense man but here's a funny story and i won't belabor it too long i walk into a, a ice cube session mm -hmm. in at echo sound in in uh silver lake and if you've mm -hmm. ever been you know what i'm saying for all of you that know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i walk in and he's like who called the popo <laughs> That one, they were saying the popo, but you have to do it in the ice cube voice. I wish I could do his voice. I couldn't do the voice. Yeah, who like, called the popo? Who, who called the popo? And I got my keyboard under my arm, and the whole studio just looked at him and went, bro, that's Ronnie King. He plays with Tupac. Like, bro. Or he plays with Snoop or wh whatever it was. It was just one of those comments. He's like, all right, well, let's see what this white boy's going to do then. Wow. Right? Wow. At two o'clock in the morning, I was already asleep. I got a call from the producer. I got, you know, you, it's LA, man. You got to get up. Yeah. You get up and you get your Producers coffee are like you, doctors 24 seven, like the home Man, call. <laughs> and you better be up and you don't want to miss the opportunity and you want to get yep. there and you come in the first thing. It's not like, oh, hi, call me them and don't call me an alien. <laughs> it's like, nah, man, we're going to call you whatever we want to freaking call you and do what we need you to do then let's see what you can do so i'm setting up my keyboard and it was the old days of the mini mug so this was like um program this is analog d and all the insiders come in and they're like ronnie king what's up this is like early dpg days and they're all giving me hugs and i'm kind of looking at ice cube like am i am i in the am i in yet you know and he didn't budge man he wanted to just see at the end of the recording session he's like all right i see i see and he looks around the room and he tells this funny joke he goes i thought you guys said rodney king was gonna come <laughs> play the keyboard and i thought that was the weirdest thing and then the white boy comes in and that was weird too it's like it's weird you know but the it's way the he was saying it but yeah so even in, within that conflict it it came out great and it was the and it was that energy of ooh, i better really I rather really better be on my game, you know, and uh, I was and the record came out and the rest is hip hop history, I guess. That's awesome. That's an awesome story, Ronnie. I mean, I, I, I definitely uh, love having you on here on the Navarro Miller Report, man. Thank you so much for being here. I got a question. A lot of people don't know who you are. How can people stalk you on social media? Ronnie King official, man. Nice, nice. And I think yeah. you're coming out with, like, are you coming out with clothing line anytime soon? What the hell? Oh, I got a bunch of weird things. You know, what do they call them? Assets. Assets. So I already dropped the book, but the book is just in, you know, Amazon. It's called Ronnie King's Seven Major Keys. And it's basically a kind of a workbook about how to survive in Hollywood. Nice. Well, go ahead and check that out. Thanks again, Ronnie, for being on the show. I'm sure we're going to have you again very soon, man. Yeah, and please give Jeremy my best. 
I will. I will most definitely. Okay. Jeremy Miller will be back on again. Make sure all of you to follow us on uh, Instagram, on Facebook. Make sure you follow Ronnie King on Instagram as well. At Ronnie King uh, Official. At Ronnie King Official. Everything, all our social media is going to be on the description on this episode. And also, uh, you could go ahead and take a look, listen to the recast on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, and a bunch of other places as well. Uh, Joe, Joe, thank you so much for listening. Uh, you know, have a good night, Joe. And uh, everybody else that listens, thanks so, so much for being on here again. Uh, and you could also make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel because we have a bunch of other episodes that we're coming up with. But for now, that's the news. In case you haven't heard it, we'll see y'all next time. You have been listening to the Navarro Miller Report. <laughs>